Hey, good morning, folks. I've got a number of things to cover, and perhaps I should have written a script, but that would sort of go against my general modus operandi of just turning on the iPhone and rambling a bit. So no script, and we'll see if I remember to cover all the topics I want to this morning. I've tried to keep a reminder of that by placing various items on my workbench here, and uh, those should be clues for me at least as to what I want to cover, hopefully fairly briefly, albeit and notwithstanding this overly long introduction. So let's start with maybe the most important things, and that is the build, my ongoing build, for the Rambler 69 appreciation build, the group build. Um, and um, I chose a Hasegawa BF-109F, uh, Hans Joachim Marseille's plane. It's a lovely model, but as I've mentioned in the past, it didn't come with an, uh, an engine. The, it was all closed up, notwithstanding what a wonderful kid it looked to be. And this, of course, was all prompted by the fact that I had a Hans Joachim uh, Marseille 132nd scale resin figure that I had purchased a while back and painted up. I did rectify and fix pretty much that seam line along the left shoulder, so that big gap that was left there is pretty much gone now, and I'm happy about that. Hans Joachim will be sitting perched on the edge of the cockpit, uh, the cockpit sill there, rather than in the plane. That was suggested, I think, in the box art or the photograph on the kit, the model kit, the figure kit that came. Anyway, um, I realized, um, okay, so I had purchased an aftermarket uh, uh, BF-109, it was a DB Daimler-Benz 601 engine for the E, Looked about right, have to do a few modifications, put it together, not quite. Still, of course, you know, the exhaust ports or the exhaust nozzles, a whole bunch of little PE pieces, and a couple of fragile lines uh, from resin, which will go on, but I wanted to make sure that the core engine fit. And after carving out the inside and opening it up, yes, the answer is it fits. Pretty much. Of course, it's just perched in there right now. But the exhaust ports uh, on the engine are lined up with the openings on both sides. Now, of course, I wanted to show it off, which meant that I was going to have to open up at least one half of the cowling. And um, I needed some advice, so I went to the expert. Here's my shout out. A big thank you to my friend, fellow modeler, uh, really talented guy in so many respects, uh, Trey, from the Orlando area, Florida. And he and I have gotten to know each other uh, because of our channels and our uh, appetite or our, uh, passion for building model airplanes, as well as other things. Trey also does like magnificent motorcycles and armor. Um, I'm probably forgetting a few things as well. But anyway, um, I knew from his collection of videos that Trey knew something about BF-109s. And so we had a, a chat the other day, and I said, you've built a few, haven't you? And he said, probably just about every kid out there, Mark. I said, well, I've come to the right person. And so he sort of walked me through as I was asking advice about how to open up this, this cowling, what tools to use, uh, he confirmed that I was on the right track. You can see that there's still some um, some rough spots down along the uh, opening for the exhaust. Uh, what would you call them? I keep forgetting the word. Not nozzles, but the exhaust pipes that will fit into the ports from the other side. And there they are in resin, individual ones. These came with the aftermarket engine. Those will go in in the end. Um, but um, the reason that isn't finished is 
my little mini Dremel. It's not a Dremel. It's an imitation Dremel or a drill, electric drill. It's burning out. Uh, it's actually shorting out. You can see there's a gap in the cord there. Uh, where's the other one? Oh, there. <laughs> yeah, this thing is, is a danger uh, to man and animal and uh, my modeling. Basically, it doesn't work anymore. My powerful Dremel just has too much torque. I do not want to be using it for, um, for just little, little areas of sanding. Of course, I could do it by hand, but I'm a little concerned because of the fragility of some of those pieces, but I'm going to get them all smoothed out. Anyway, we got this opened up. Uh, Trey sent me a wonderful picture of an actual BF-109. Looks like it's at a modern air show or something. I was just judging from a, stand, a passerby or somebody who's in the picture, but it looks like the, uh, you know, it's a vintage real 109 with the desert markings and with the left-hand side, the port side of the engine cowling open. And there it is propped up with the, with the bar. Um, I used a piece of uh, piano wire uh, to do that. That is just, your friend is canopy glue. I just used a little drop of white canopy glue on both ends to hold it open for the moment. Um, that piece still has to be joined. Uh, you know, that's actually two pieces there, the side and then the top with the indentation for the machine gun. Um, opening, opening up that, because it was a solid piece, of course, the left and the right, which is now two pieces, the top part of the cowling. Uh, what I used was my engraving tool etcher, basically to go down through the center where there was a faint line and, re and keep going in and in until it was fairly deep and could get a nice bite then with this wonderful little saw that um, I bought this kit. I think I got this at Hobby Lobby when I went in there to s look for something else and I saw this and I saw what the heck. I've got plenty of X-Acto knives, um, but um, I said, you know, maybe this, this tool would come in handy. And what do you know, this was the first time I had used it. And uh, I used it with the big blade. It's, it's, I mean, long blade. It's really thin, really sharp and it worked like a charm to cut right there, cut right along there and separate those two. So I've just got that, you know, fit in there with a piece of uh, Tamiya masking tape underneath, and then we've got it propped open. Uh, we've got to do the rest of the engine assembly, of course, the whole interior, but I'm feeling, feeling pretty darn optimistic now. Maybe I better be careful. Speaking about piano wire, um, I discovered that this piece of shit pair of um, snippers, uh, that's what I'll call them, big snippers, uh, uh, that I bought at a hardware store. If it says made in China and they're really cheap, I don't think this thing would cut butter. I don't think it would cut a piece of celery. There's a gap, I don't, yeah, crap. I did find my old, much more, um, much better. I'm going to call them snippers because I can't think of the proper word. Those are snippers, you know, but I don't use those on, on heavy metal. But even, even this tiny little, tiny little piece of piano wire, this piece of crap from China wouldn't open it. Of course, one little click from these snippers, which are uh, Japan, of course, Nippon. Nippon. Okay, all over the place. Uh, thank you again, Trey. Really appreciate. And um, his channel is uh, Trey's Models. And um, I'll put a link to it. But I'll bet if you're watching this now, you know about his channel. Really accomplished builder. And buddy, I really appreciate the advice. We had a, we had a FaceTime conversation so I could show him what I was up against. And um, he didn't guide me through the process real time, but he gave me all of the advice I needed to make this look like it's, it's going to be a success. And for that, I'm very grateful. Okay, that's it. I'll, I'll talk about my, my customized miniature holder here <laughs> at some other point. 
already gone far too off topic and um, got to put an order in for a mini Dremel, something a little better than this uh, cheap piece of crap, but it did work for a while. Thanks for watching, folks. And uh, Hans Joachim says, uh, Auf Wiedersehen.